Well, good morning, Agape Lifecasters. I'm going to do an update on our three systems we're looking at in the Atlantic. First one, of course, is Tropical Depression 13. The next one is 14, which will soon become Laura. And uh, we have that system just moving off the coast of Africa that the National Hurricane Center is giving a 50% chance of development over the next five days. And I believe that is going to be our next system, but we're really not going to worry too much about that. So the first system we need to talk about is 13. But before we do that, let's take a good look at the overview satellite picture. We can see we have our system east of the islands, and that is Tropical Depression 13. Then we have what will soon become Laura over the western, northwestern Caribbean Sea that will be impacting the Gulf Coast states of Texas and Louisiana here in the next few days and our system off the coast of Africa. So let's take a look at Tropical Depression 13. If you look at it, it really looks like a tropical wave. It probably barely has a closed circulation and the reason why is it's still moving off towards the west uh, west northwest at 21 miles an hour. Maximum sustained winds are 35 miles an hour. There are still some tropical storm watches in effect for the north northern leeward islands, but uh, we're still looking for it to become a hurricane later on down the line. Next thing I want to look at is the infrared picture for tropical depression 14. And it is very close to the coast of Honduras and Nicaragua, uh, real close to the border there. It has slowed way down, moving off to the west-northwest at 12 miles an hour. You can see it has a lot better organization. It doesn't have as many of those bright thunderstorms as Tropical Depression 13 has, but it's got a better rotation. And the reason why is it's, uh, it's moving a lot slower, and that's going to allow it to get a lot better organized. The other thing it has going for it is the waters of the Northwest Caribbean Sea are a lot warmer. They are piping hot, as I mentioned in yesterday's video. And currently there's a hurricane watch in effect uh, for the Yucatan Peninsula near uh, Punta Herrero and Cancun. And there's some tropical storm warnings in effect for Honduras and Nicaragua, uh, the Bay Islands of Honduras, and up near Cancun. And... I would expect we're going to see a whole host of tropical storm warnings and hurricane warnings over the next few days. Taking a look at Hervac, we see that Tropical Depression 13 is expected to move north of the Big Islands, move just through the Florida Straits, so right over Key West, as a strong tropical storm, and into the eastern Gulf as a hurricane. Now, one thing that's very interesting here is at one point, if I switch over to Tropical Depression 14, we see the track brings it right along the upper Texas coast uh, between Sabine Pass uh, and Galveston Bay, right around High Island, as a hurricane. Now, I don't know if I've ever seen two hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico at the same time this close together. This is a first, this, but this is 2020. So it will be very interesting to see how these two storms interact with each other, especially given their close proximity. And I'm going to show you what the forecast models are calling for in a little bit. But as we see the closeness of these two systems, uh, you get, you've got uh, Tuesday afternoon making landfall here along the upper Texas coast for what should be Laura. And then what will be Marco, we have Tuesday afternoon in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. So really only separated by maybe 500 miles, you could have two hurricanes. That will definitely be a meteorological sight to behold, something that I have never seen myself. So stay tuned. So taking a look back at Tropical Depression 13, I want to show you the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds. This shows you that we can see tropical storm force winds arriving in Florida by Monday morning and through the Keys by midday Monday and then finally by Tuesday into the panhandle of Florida and later on in the afternoon evening 
maybe on into Wednesday along into Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. And I'm going to show you the tracks of these systems here in a second. Taking a look at 14, what should be Laura. We're going to look at the arrival time of Saturday for the onset of tropical storm force winds, and maybe even hurricane force winds along the Yucatan Peninsula. And then as it gets into the Gulf, we're looking at overnight Monday, possibly early Tuesday morning for the onset of tropical storm force winds along the Louisiana and Texas coastline. Taking a look at the forecast models, this is looking at the forecast models through Google Earth. And this is all of the forecast models that are available for this system. Taking a look at them, we can see that this is actually a fairly well behaved storm because it's moving around the Bermuda High and the Bermuda High seems to be fairly well behaved right now. We don't have any huge troughs of low pressure coming around out of the Rockies that are going to play a big influencing factor on this. So it seems pretty set right now that this is going to track somewhere north of the island, somewhere right over the Bahamas, just south of the Bahamas, and somewhere into South Florida or through the Keys and into Apalachicola uh, or somewhere to New Orleans, somewhere in between there. I, my guess right now is somewhere along the Mississippi, Alabama, Apalachicola uh, area. And I think that's probably a pretty good guess. So if we look over at TD14, let's see where it what it decides to do here we scroll over there we see we have a lot less certainty here uh, again as i mentioned yesterday some of this is because of intensity guesses on the the in the uh, part of the models we we kind of have a scattergun approach here but as i narrow this down on some other model views here you'll you'll see that uh especially if, even if you look here you see the density of the models are pointed towards western Louisiana and the upper Texas coast with some outliers uh, and we can really throw these out towards uh, central Mexico we can throw those out and I think we really we can throw these out that are towards Mississippi and Alabama and even over towards uh, central Louisiana or New Orleans we have to remember that we have uh, TD 13 uh, over here as well and that's going to actually play a, a role in where TD14 is going to go. There, there's this uh, phenomenon called the Fujiwara effect in which systems have a tendency to rotate around each other uh, when they get in close proximity. And so what that will do to TD14 is it'll have a tendency to want to push it off to the left a little bit. It, it won't suck it in. It, they, they won't come together to form a super system. If anything, they'll dumbbell around each other counterclockwise. And so what the Fujiwara effect will want to do to TD14 is push it a little bit to the left, and it'll want to bring 13 a little bit to the right, if that makes sense to you. So taking a look back at TD13, if we look at just some of our more reliable models we can see that TD13 seems to want to make a beeline for the Alabama coast maybe Pensacola Florida and that's where the official track is putting it taking a look at TD14 we can see that we have a beeline for the upper Texas coast maybe west towards Lake Charles Louisiana and it seems to want to be uh, fairly well behaved as well although I'm, I'm a little skeptical of that we'll, we'll see what happens yeah, I would not be surprised to see it move on this west north this northwest west northwest course for the next six hours, maybe even move north northwest. But then, as it gets influenced by TD thirteen or whatever system that's going to be, whether it's going to be Marco, whether it's going to be a hurricane or a tropical storm, if we don't get some of that Fujiwara effect, and then maybe in the last day it maybe gets pushed a little bit back more towards the northwest and maybe heads down a little bit more closer to Matagorda or Freeport. We're just going to have to see. So taking a look at some more of the models, we can see we have a little bit of a scatter here, some more down towards Corpus, some, some down towards Victoria, and looking a little bit uh, wider here on some of our lake track guidance, we can see we really have a, a wide range of disagreement between the models. So until we really get a firm uh, center and a really strong developed system, 
that the models can really get a handle on and say, okay, this is my guy, this is who I'm going with. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit difficult for these models to pick up on. So I want to show you kind of what's going on in the model world. You can see we still have this big trough of low pressure over Mississippi, Louisiana, dipping down into the Gulf. And we have our systems out here. And as we go forward in time, we can see that trough of low pressure is really going to dissipate. It's, it's going to back out. And we're going to have our ridge of high pressure really take control over the Bahamas and move over and nose over into the Gulf. And so much so that by about three, four days, we have our system, which should be, like I said, should be Laura, going to be moving up into the Texas coast. And then the GFS is really not keen on TD-13. So we'll have to see what happens with this. Uh, if this is stronger, th these two interactions are going to be very interesting to watch. So looking at the European, the European is very bullish on TD-13, not so much on TD-14. So it's very strong with TD-13 bringing it in to right around Galveston Bay, maybe Freeport, and bringing TD-13 uh, up into Mississippi, Alabama area, uh, bringing 14 into uh, Freeport area. Final thing I want to show you is the shear forecast. And this is the one thing I was trying to figure out when I was looking at the fact that the, the forecast track were, was putting two hurricanes in the Gulf at the same time. Because normally if you have two systems in pro close proximity with each other, they're going to shear one another. Or one system is going to become dominant. And it's not going to allow the other to develop. And this is what I was a little um, concerned with uh, as far as our systems. I, I'm, I'm not real sure how this is going to work out. But according to the shear forecast, you can see uh, if we look at about, let's see here, 72 hours out, 78 hours out, 72 hours now, you can see you have a, an anticyclone above what will be uh, Marco or TD-13 uh, TD right now, and you have an anti-cyclone above TD-14. Uh, the shear forecast seems to indicate that it is going to be possible to maintain two hurricanes, and that is really remarkable. I, I can't, I've never seen anything like that. So uh, normally what would happen is you would have one become dominant and the outflow from one would shear the other uh, perhaps the, uh, 14 would become dominant and the outflow of it would shear 13. And I'm, I'm still not sold that this is going to be the solution and that this won't happen. So as we move forward in time, what we see by day four is that it still wants to put two good anticyclones on top of each of these systems, but that we have a trough of low pressure approaching TD-14 as it gets closer to the coast uh, it would have tremendous outflow. And so if this validates, it, it's very possible that we could get an intensifying system as it approaches the upper Texas coast. So that's all for now. I will definitely be keeping you guys updated. And until next time, just remember Jesus is still on the throne. God bless you. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this edition of Agape Livecast. And whether you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, I ask that you do me a favor. Please like the video and share it. And if you haven't already done so, please like the Agape Livecast Facebook page. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, may God richly bless you and keep you.